All right, everyone, welcome, welcome to Obsession to Profession, Women in Fandom Built Business. This is going to be an exciting panel and we are so excited about it. Now, I do want to mention today, and if you see here on Get Vocal in the chat, our admin, Bryn, has just put a link to Make-A-Wish Foundation. And we are so excited that this whole Force Fest weekend is dedicated to Make-A-Wish Greater LA because we, we partnered with a local chapter of Make-A-Wish so that your dollars will directly fund wishes for critically ill children. And we think that's very, very important. So there is a link in the chat that you can go to to directly donate to that page. Or if you donate through Get Vocal V Coin, which is the little blue diamond with a V in it, you just purchase right here on Get Vocal. You can tip during our panel. You can tip and you can put a gif with it. You can do all kinds of fun things. Um, if you tip that way, Get Vocal will match 33% of all donations made through Get Vocal V Coin. Super exciting. And we already have a donation. Oh my goodness. From Peter. Thank you, Peter. Ooh. Thanks, Dad. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we so appreciate that. That's exciting. So, yes, if you tip through Get Vocal V Coin, we will also shout you out no matter what we're talking about. It's very exciting. All right. So, first of all, I know we have three panelists here. So, let's introduce each of us. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Woloski, and I'm best known in Star Wars fandom as a podcaster with my husband, Richard Woloski, mm -hmm. on Skywalking Through Neverland, which is a Star Wars and Disney fan podcast. And also, I'm on Fangirls Going Rogue, which is an all-female Star Wars podcast with my fangirl besties, Trisha Barr and Teresa Delgado. And let's see. Oh, and then, so now that's my fandom, and as a day job, since 2007, I run a non-fandom related business with my husband, but since April 3rd of this year, I've created my own fandom inspired business, Face Masks for Fandom. So that's me, but let's go now to Pasita Prasarn. Now, Pasita, you're a 16 year veteran running your own business. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's totally cool. Yeah. You and your partner, Daniel Myers, right? You've run various yeah, yeah. businesses through many yeah, iterations. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we started a long time ago, like it doing rent fairs when we were like in our twenties. Um, <laughs> and it just grew into this. Yeah, it grew into oh. tea and absinthe, right? Yes, tea and absinthe. We do uh, fandom themed tea and uh, barware and all kinds of stuff. Awesome. And is that primarily online or is that primarily convention based? Actually, we go to conventions and we also have an online store. So both. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, and before we go to Morgan, Pasita, I need to ask you, what are you drinking? Oh. Uh, today I'm drinking uh, Ravenclaw, uh, Elixir of Wisdom. It's a uh, black tea with like a little floral fig and uh, lychee in it. So it's really good. And did you create this? Mm. We picked we pick teas for that match the different uh, fandoms. And we actually have lots of arguments between us about them. We're just like, no, this house is like this. No, this house is like this. So <laughs> it's a lot of... A lot of uh, market research, let's say, or product research. Okay, so what? A lot of drinking tea. What flavor represents wisdom to you? Um, well, when I drink this, I just feel like, like it's the kind of thing that you would drink if you were doing really long study. If you were like in the library for hours, just like drink, 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 drink. That this is the thing that would keep you going. Okay. Okay. Nice. All right. Oh, and then wait. Show off your mug. Because isn't that one of your oh. designs? Woo! Uh, this is one of the things that we sell in the store, yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> also another thing that gets me going in the morning. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, now I want to welcome Morgan Rooks. She is a self-described Star Wars geek and Disney fan, and also the owner of Luminous Beings Limited. Morgan, hello! Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And Pasita, I'm a Ravenclaw, and that tea sounds right on the mark for me. It's right on the money, so Ooh. it's perfect. <laughs> nice. All right, so Morgan, you're also a podcaster, correct? 
Uh, yeah, my husband and I uh, started a podcast actually after the last celebration called That's Not How the Force Works. Um, <laughs> it, as we say, it's a geeky podcast that's mostly about Star Wars. Uh, we talk about some other stuff, but we talk about Star Wars a lot. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> All right. So I have a question for you because I asked yes. Pasita what she was drinking. And now I need to ask you, did you have any blue milk this morning? I did not. Um, I can't remember what I had. I had one of the one of the beers that's available at uh, Ronto Roasters. But um, so yes, we were on Batu this morning. It is the first birthday for Batu East. Um, it was really exciting. We took a little cupcake, took photos with the cupcake in front of the Falcon, and uh, super exciting thing was that we ran into Ashley Eckstein. <laughs> Just taking photos in front of the Falcon. Oh my gosh. Okay, so did you like go up to her and say hello? I did. I let her finish her photos and her videos, which I'm sure you'll see on Instagram in a little bit. Um, and then I kind of called her over and asked if I could, we could do a socially distant photo, um, which I posted on my personal Instagram, which is uh, at the girl in the galaxy. And, you know, we chat a little bit. I was still a little... I still get a little starstruck. My husband still sometimes wants to grab me and pull me away because I'm just like, ah, <laughs> I'm not cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're totally cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, I'm, but, go ahead. Oh, God. I was saying, and she was wearing the new um, sweat shorts and sweatshirt combo. And I like Ooh. instantly went and bought it at Tatooine Traders. <laughs> it's amazing how, like, I think that's the number one way I decide to buy uh, like a fandom piece is if one of my friends has done it first and it's like, oh, that looks cute. Mm -hmm. I need it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Well, thank you, Morgan. All right. So now I think we should get into it and kind of share our businesses first. And then we're going to go over some questions about how we got there, kind of how we run our business and all of that throughout the panel. And I will say that Unfortunately, the panel after us did have to cancel. So that means we can go a little bit longer than an hour, which is nice. Are you guys good with that? Pasito and Morgan? Yeah, good. Okay. okay, cool. All right, just so you guys watching know that we may go a little over our hour. All right, so first of all, since this is obsession to profession, I think we should start with our obsessions. So what fandoms are you into and why? And let's start with actually Pasita. Okay. Um, I'm into so many fandoms, <laughs> um, like, you know, everything Doctor Who, obviously, I have to tell you this behind me, uh, Doctor Who, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, Harry Potter, Harry Potter's a big one, um, <laughs> uh, all, I started with, uh, old school, when I was eight, 15 years old, I got a copy of Foundation Trilogy from Isaac Asimov, and I was hooked, and, like, I met my partner when I was 18 in the NYU Science Fiction Club. So, like, anything to do with science fiction or fantasy or um, science, really, uh, and history, um, is, is just my jam. I'm totally into it. Awesome. All right, Morgan. Yes. Um, so I live, breathe, and bleed Star Wars. <laughs> First and foremost, um, as you mentioned, I'm also a big Disney fan and not just the Disney movies, but also the Disney parks. Um, we live in Orlando now, so it gives us a really close access to Disney parks, but also oh, so many other things, Harry Potter and Marvel. Um, gosh, I, you know, Battlestar Galactica and <laughs> so many things, like <laughs> whatever the, the thing that I like latch onto at the moment. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, cool. And then I'll talk about my fandoms. So I love Star Wars and Disney. Like those are two big fandoms. It's kind of hard to choose which is more, but I also really love Marvel. And since the whole MCU, like, and what they're doing with the behind the scenes being inclusive and in front of the camera. Like I just really like Marvel is fast becoming like top out of star Wars or even Disney. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I've been trying to actually do more Marvel things and show my love for that more because I think at the beginning of my fandom, it kind of took a back seat. So uh, yeah, I've, I've been loving Marvel. And then, of course, Harry Potter is a big deal, too. It's kind of like whatever you're watching at the time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So those are our fandoms. Now, I do want to call out before we move on that we've had some donations. 
So thank you. Mm. Thank you to Bryn. Thank you to Peter. And thank you to Norma, my mom. And thank you to Ryan also in the chat. Wow, you guys, thank you so much for your VCoin donations. So exciting. Okay. All right. So let's get into it now. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, okay. So this is where we get to show and tell. We have to tell kind of about our businesses first before we can get into the nitty gritty of how we got there. So uh, actually, let's start with what led you to start your own business and, and describe like what you do now. And you can show pictures, you can show, it's kind of like a show and tell section. So let's see, Morgan, let's start with you. Yeah, so um, I, I have a bit of a, a kind of a winding path to where I got. So I was always kind of crafty and always looking for ways to show off my fandom in different crafty ways. And uh, before a trip to Walt Disney World, when we didn't live in Florida, I had made actually this jacket with a bunch of pins and patches. And it's got a little fabric panel on the back. And I got a lot of uh, great compliments. And I was like, I'm going to start an Etsy shop. So I bought all these jean jackets, like upcycled them, put, you know, panels on the back and, uh, they didn't really sell, but, uh, I happened to fall in love with loft cats. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided to make a loft cat enamel pin and that's how luminous beings limited really took off is that we are an enamel pin shop for the most part. Um, we are branching off into other things to be, to be seen, but, um, so yeah, so let me grab Woohoo! Show and so, tell. These are examples of some of the pins that we've done so far. So this little guy over here uh, is our very first Lothcat that we ever did. Um, this one's really special. This is the Moray pin that was specially commissioned by Ann Convery, who is uh, the namesake of the Convor and Dave Filoni's wife, as I'm sure you all know. But um, I like doing fun things like this this hot callus on the metal because I always thought the hot callus fandom was just really funny and we really needed a callus and a sparkly heart. Um, and then we also have a cool line called the Heritage Collection where we do things that aren't necessarily canon anymore. So things like um, Ewok Adventure, Wicket, and like the... Ooh, uh, Gendy Tartakovsky. Uh, Gendy Tart Gen yeah, Gendy Tartakovsky, Clone Wars, and this... Oh, See, backwards. And this Chewie is from the Boba Fett cartoon from the holiday special. Whoa, so, don't tell Richard about that, yeah. my husband. Uh, <laughs> we'll make sure he yeah, gets okay. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, so I do have to say that Anne Convery um, actually helped bless this particular panel because she's the one who recommended Pasita, you to join this panel. <laughs> yeah. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, and then Morgan, you've been in business for three years with Luminous Beings. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, we had our three year anniversary uh, this past July. Okay, awesome. All right. So Pasita, can you show and tell us about tea and absinthe? Well, it's a little hard to see the tea. I mean, I could show you. I do have like, pictures. This is our party. I have. Yes, I know, right? You, you have pictures. I think your pictures are better. Okay, than, I'll show. I'll show some what pictures. I have in person. I'll show some pictures. Let me get that. So uh, we started Teen Absinthe about ten years ago, um, and we do fandom themed tea. Well, we we were just doing tea, but then we were really big into Doctor Who, and my husband has been watching it for decades, and and we were like obsessed with it. Like I know all the where the fabric from David Tennant's clothes came from like i know where they got that fabric and i'm like oh so we were kind of obsessed i don't know so uh we said well you know what tea makes you think of you know a character or um a a a, a fandom um so uh <laughs> so those are friendly pictures from us loading the car um so we we tried to Imagine what teas would be for different characters that, that when you drank it, it made you really feel like you were thinking of them, reminded you of that character and all that character's, you know, actions and, and, and thoughts. So um, it started with Doctor Who and we did a collection of the, the, the newer Doctors, 9, 10, 11, uh, then went on to 12 and 13. So like it's it's been pretty, pretty interesting <laughs> because... A lot of people have come up to me and said, oh my God, that tea is so that character. Um, it's so that 
that doctor or or yeah totally we have a supernatural tea we have a a, um, a steven universe tea my husband oh that's the steven universe um picture right there <laughs> that uh, crystal gems tea yeah we, we made together breakfast i don't know if anybody knows steven universe but um so, but they're they're good on their own without having to be necessarily related to fandom. But um, they just just give me such a feeling or a thought of that that character, and it's kind of like bringing fandom into the rest of your life, not just a screen that or or a, a comic book or a book that you're reading. It kind of brings uh, fandom into you know, the kitchen into, into your drinking or into like all different parts of your life. And, um, that's, that's what I like. Amazing. That's what we do. I love that. All right. Mm. I love like, you know, the candle scents or the, that, mm -hmm. that bring you to particular, uh, places and stuff like sea or mm -hmm. something. So I think that's really cool that you do that. This season. Yeah. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to tell you guys about fandom for your face <laughs> or face masks for fandom. Can't decide which. So, so, um, since, since really what, like 2009 or so I've been working with Richard on a non fandom related business. And, but when, when this whole thing happened, uh, in March and we got the lockdown and we got the pandemic, like all of a sudden there was times that, um, you know, people were supposed to be wearing face masks or at least, you know, people in hospitals needed them to donate. And basically our business was shut down due to the pandemic because we work in party entertainment. So that wasn't happening. And so on, so, so like basically we were sitting at home doing nothing, trying to do something of course, but like it, it's hard. And so when the call came out that people needed masks, I was like, well, I can sew, you know, I've cosplayed. I learned how to sew for costumes. Um, I have a bunch of fabric because of our business. We are, we're always creating stuff. So I was like ready made to just spend a lot of hours sewing and donating masks. And then on April 3rd, it just happened that, you know, the government said, okay, everyone needs to wear face masks. And so, I decided along like between social media and my friend Teresa and <clears throat> my mom, like all things happened at once. And I decided, okay, we're going to start selling face masks. And so like from one minute to the next, I had a business <laughs> selling face masks and I went to, you know, the store the next day, Joanne's and I got a bunch of fabric and, and yeah, so I started making these face masks for fandom, which here's one. Here's a Harry Potter face mask right there. Pretty fun, right? <laughs> but, and then between making all the donation masks, you know, I found like the best, the best one that I liked that was most comfortable. And anyway, so we started this really grassroots kind of business that way. Um, and then like, I got so into it that I started, you know, well, hey, how can I make these face masks more fun? Because we all have to wear them. So what... <laughs> what I did was I started sourcing some baby Yoda patches because I mean, who wants a baby Yoda face mask? I do. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, um, I sourced some ribbon and some oh patches. God, so cute. Yeah. And this is like the park snacks one, but yeah. And they're, they're like so great. They're pretty easy to put on. Oops. Okay. Well, I have lipstick on right now. We don't want to mess that <laughs> up, but yeah, they're really cute. And, and so, yeah, so we just started doing like some pre-orders of those, which sold out right away. So that was very exciting. Uh, so that's kind of my show and tell. So let's see. Let's get back. Um, <laughs> have you guys been wearing face masks? Of course. Yeah, lots of you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so now let's go into, because we all kind of have businesses that grew out of our fandom. So how has your fandom really affected? affected your business um it's see pasita mm, okay um hmm that's a good question um it gives me a community community to be a part of and it's like i was in the community already with um i was doing a lot of steampunk stuff and a lot of sci-fi con stuff and um so i was part of a community 
And then we said, oh, hey, wouldn't it be fun to, um, you know, you know, have different influences with our, our teas, with our, with our product and all that. So, um, yeah, fandom influences what I, I buy for the store, what I uh, create for the store. Uh, fandom also, because of that community, gets me into other fandoms, meaning I, I learn about so many things from other people at, at, at conventions and stuff, um, like, oh, my God, they're really into this. Well, tell me why you're into this. And uh, then I go home and I watch it, read it, you know, ch- check it out. And then, oh, my God, I become obsessed with whatever the thing they're obsessed with. So it's kind of like we're all sharing of our obsessions, which then, like, influences what I do with my business. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Fandom is That's important. cool. Like, the, that whole environment can really help you expand your business just by talking to people. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. awesome. All right. All right, Morgan, yeah. what about you? Um, so obviously we're a fandom based, you know, business, but I think what I love about what we do with LBL is that I'm trying to put out the things that I want to see that hopefully other people want. Like, um, at the time that we made the loth cat pin, no one else was making a loth cat pin. So I was like, I want that. And you know, just the, the things like hot callus or, <laughs> so um, you know, the Ahsoka Convoy, like, a lot of people produce amazing Star Wars pins. There's a lot of great pin makers. So I try to think about, okay, what's not making, what's not being made that I really want. And hopefully people want them too. So far it's worked out. Yeah. I was going to say like that, that have your instincts really worked out for you? Um, For the most part, there have been some things that have been slower to move. Um, and you know, you kind of learn from that and then you, you know, price things accordingly. But for the most part, uh, once once it gets out there, once a couple of people get it and start sharing it on social media, then you find all those other people that like that same niche thing that you do. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, as for me, I, kind of similar. Like I, I saw, you know, no one had a Baby Yoda mask. It was super hard to source Baby Yoda fabric. Like cotton was back ordered for two months and like people needed face masks now. And so I couldn't, that's why I, I found like baby Yoda patches and baby Yoda ribbon and was like, let's just put this together. So yeah, same, same, the fandom kind of affected me that way. Like, oh, I want this. So maybe other people do. And yeah, it totally does. (laughs) And then plus fandom has really affected my business because I, you know, I, I host two, I co-host two podcasts and have a fan base already with those. So I think that really helped like my sales. Um, and I want to thank everyone out there who's watching, who has ordered face masks. I know many of you are. And, and I think, I think I recognize like 90% of the names that ordered uh, face masks for me. So that's, that's pretty neat. Okay. That's so awesome. Yeah. Like, when you get repeat business from the same people or like oh, yeah. the people that you're ordering, like it's like the best feeling like it, with Etsy, yeah, you, yeah, you it is. See, like repeat orders, and you're like, you really like. <laughs> <laughs> I know that is. Yep, yeah, yeah, and then true. you know, it's kind of like validation for oh, you put out a good product that people recognize as quality, or yeah, they want more of it. So that's that's like really exciting, and I think yeah, like the only way you know if it works is if you try, and I think that's the number one thing I learned this past year. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So is a woman owned business different and how Morgan, since you're there, do you want to take that on? Uh, sure. So, you know, I think being a pin shop, being totally online based, it gives me a little bit of anonymity. Like people aren't necessarily always sure like who the face is running behind it. Um, but you know, it, being a female in a fandom is always kind of challenging. So there's that. Uh, but I love the fact that thus far it's been an opening space, an open space. I love that there are more female led businesses coming out in, especially in the star Wars fandom. And that's become super supportive, but yeah, I think being online, you can kind of, if you don't choose to show people who you are, or, you know, kind of put your name out there you can, you can remain hidden if you want. That's true. Okay. All right, Pasito, what about you? Do you think a woman-owned business is different? (laughs) Okay. So I do think it's different. I think that um, we tend to grow things and grow our businesses uh, in a more holistic way. So um, so while some other businesses might want to 
just push for growth, I think where we think more about the whole picture. So you can't just grow your business and just forget about things like, well, what's our, our, our environmental impact? What's our, our social impact? What's our political impact? That, um, that, that we think about it as a whole. So, um, so, so yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, a woman run diff, uh, business takes those things into account that um, like, for instance, we used to carry plastic bags in the store um, because I couldn't afford anything else at the time. But once I was able to um, afford a little bit more that we got more sales, I switched to paper bags as, as fast as I could. Um, so I think I'm thinking more uh, about not how much profit I could take out of the business, but how much can I put into it and leave in it to make it better, to make it more responsible, to make it more, um, make it more, make it more healthy instead of just profit, profit, profit. So that's my opinion on. That's minutes. really cool. It's definitely like a nurturing type of outlook toward the business and the world, really. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a great, great comment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And I think too, like sometimes, I think being a woman affects the type of products we make too. Like, I think that I have a, a more of a feminine slant on the pins that we design. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna put words in Pasita's mouth, but it, you know, my guess is like our designs and the way that, you know, we present things are pro probably have more of a female touch than, a non-female run business. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, Morgan. I mean, speaking as like, I haven't had, I'm not in business long enough to really see too much of a difference because I'm online as well. But I know as a consumer, like if it's, if the business is owned by a woman, I'm, te I tend to gravitate more toward it, more toward it, even if I don't know it's owned by a woman, you know, like, and then I find out later or something like that. And they also, those businesses tend to sell products that I like way more. So <laughs> there you go. Like the marketing and everything. It just, it makes a lot of sense about that. Uh, we did have a question a while back. Hold on. From Bryn. Let's see. I thought I saw something. Ooh. Hey, we just got a, oh, oh, get vocal. Just, just woohoo, donated. Yay, get vocal. <laughs> Thank you, get vocal. Hold on. I saw your question, Brendan. Now I can't find it. All right, type it again if you uh, if you uh, have that again. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what is the best advice you can give for someone who's starting a business, and what's the best advice you yourself have been given? Uh, Pasita. Okay. Let's see. It's best. I, uh, best advice I would give is to. No, think about a business. Think about what kind of life you want to live. So like, for instance, when I was younger, I, I thought really hard about it, about what kind of a life I wanted. And I, I know that I prefer project-based things as opposed to uh, just nine to five in an office grind kind of things. So like, I like projects where you work on a project and it's done and you move on to the next project. So I said, well, what kind of jobs can I have and what kind of business can I have that would that would um that would satisfy that? Also, um um that, you know, how much time do I want to give to my business and my life and my art and things like that? So like and and other people. Like it's it's your whole life to think about your whole life and uh, uh see how a business can fit in the life that you want. So um, that's the best advice I would give is, is think about the lifestyle that you want to live, whether, you know, if, if you're comfortable living in, you know, a little shack or if you want an apartment or if you want a house or if you want to live, like do projects or if you want like your income to be a uh, catch as catch can or steady. Because I have friends who say, um, they can't live with owning a business because the, the money isn't steady until they, they figure it out. Um, they would much rather work for somebody else or a big, bigger company, but, you know, a steady kind of, kind of income. So like, well, I'm okay with working from con to con. And some people 
you know, want that steady job. So this is the kind of lifestyle I want. So I said, hmm, I've seen people do like, you know, craft fair booths and con booths and things like that. And I think that I could do that. So um, that's, that's what I did. So think about the lifestyle that you want and a business that can fit into it rather than a business first. That's great advice. Oh, oh, oh. And the best advice that I've been given was actually a conversation I had with uh, another uh, vendor, a clothing vendor, who's like uh, a really good friend of mine. And she said that business is is a stairway, oh. not a slope, uh, that gr- growth. So like, um, this again, again, going to, to how, how women think um, about business is that it's not just growth, like sales, sales. And then when you decide to know that that leveling up part, that's that stairway is like this, where you're going, ah, okay, I know the money coming in, I know money going out, I know expenses, and I know my sales, uh, but I want to level up and grow. Then you go, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then, ah, uh, level off, level off. I mean, because that, that going up, let me tell you, it's scary. It, it's like you're making investments and you're making decisions to level up. And you don't know if it's, if it's going to work. You don't know if you're going to you know, fly or you're going to crash and burn. Yeah. So um, that's the best advice I've given. I've been given is that it's a stairway, not a slope. Nice. I love that advice. And we do have to keep it clean, Pasita. I'm sorry. I forgot I'm sorry. to warn you. No worries. No worries. <laughs> that's cool. All right. Uh, Morgan, what about you? Yeah. So I echo so much of what Pasita said. Like, Um, think about what you want your business to be, you know, do you want this to be just a side hustle, which I don't say just, do you want it to be a side hustle to produce things that you enjoy? You know, do you want to have it be a level where you can have a store or, you know, go to cons or do you want to be the next her universe? Like think about that kind of stuff when you're starting your business and also think about the limitations or the the time that you can give your business because that's going to equate how successful your business is and where you want to go. You know, I work 40 hours a week in advertising. My job is really demanding. Um, and so I would love to spend more time in my business, but I'm also okay with the fact that I have a finite amount of time that I can give my business right now. So that's important. Um, I think the other big piece of advice that I would give people is your journey is your own. It's very easy to look at other businesses and see how fast they're growing or perceive how much they are selling and let that... Um, it tear you down or let, let that get you discouraged. But you really have to understand that everyone is journey. Everyone's journey is different. Everybody starts with different capital. Uh, you know, you just can't compare yourself. Just keep doing what you're doing and stay loyal to who you are and what your brand is. And you know, the people will be there. The people will come. Um, I think the best advice, I don't know, this wasn't given to me. I read Bob Iger's book recently. It's a really great book. Um, and the one thing that he says in there a lot is, you know, don't, don't just have a problem, have a solution. Like if you are approaching somebody and be like with a problem, like make sure that you have a solution there as well. So, and do that with yourself before you just kind of freak out and be like, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world. Like there's a solution in there. Stop. Wow. That's such great advice. I love that. (laughs) Um, So my, my advice I could give to people is, you know, it, it has to do with expectation. I think my advice is, like if you if you are working a nine to five job, you work that nine to five at five, you close your desk, you close your office, you go home, you don't you don't think about it. But if you own your own business, you're open all hours and you have to expect to be working all hours and work hard. I mean, depending on the type of business you want. But yeah, and I mean this this can happen, this can affect your family sometimes and if it does, my advice is to just make sure you communicate with them. Even if it's something hard you need to say, just get it out because you never know what they're thinking. And I, I think like that's my biggest advice because there's always a learning curve there. And then my advice that I was given, also like Morgan, it's from a book. It's from Ashley Eckstein's book about, uh, oh gosh, I, I didn't write down the name of the book. Do you guys know offhand? No. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> if anyone knows in the chat, let me know. But yeah, her, her book about her life and her business um, is, 
I loved this advice. Spend a little time each day going toward your dream or your goal. Like just even if it's 10 minutes, you're 10 minutes closer to that goal. And I think that's really important. And uh, yeah, that's why I got like a, a day planner, happy planner. I'm like, okay, what am I doing each day for that? So it's your universe is the book. There you go. Your Thank you, Ray Walker. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Bryn, also, it's your universe. You have the power to make it happen by Ashley Eckstein. If you have not read this book, oh my gosh, it will change your life. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of our businesses. How do you guys build your customers, your fans, your followers? How does that work? Pasita. Uh, luck. <laughs> no, uh, there is luck, but there's also a lot of hard work. Um, so we do mostly conventions and online. So whenever we do a convention, we always give um, people our, our business sticker because we have, oh, on here. instead of business cards, we do business stickers because everybody loves stickers with our website on it. And uh, any customers that we have who say, hey, you can reorder online when you run out of tea. Um, and that has really helped spread the spread the word. So um, cons are pretty profitable, but the the they they return so much in advertising as well, mm. is in getting the word out and in being exposed to so many people and also so many different people. Because some buddy in a fandom, which maybe uh, I'm not familiar with, will get into one of our teas and then they'll tell their fandom and their friends and their friends. And so that, that word of mouth. Um, we also have a mailing list. Um, uh, we also have a website. I, I post um, things about our business and about our products on social media. Um, and yeah, that's, and there's a lot of luck too. <laughs> also like doing your best to have like a really good product or, or things that are unique or, um, uh, um, a, a experience like when people walk into my booth at, at a con it's not just stuff it's an experience people are are, are looking and touching well I don't know about now because of COVID <laughs> um, but we, we had sniffers for a tea so they could smell the teas and uh, we tell them how the teas uh, link to different fandoms um, how they're inspired um, how they taste like it's 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 talking about sensory things and uh, they take that home with them and they remember that. And um, that's how, how we get, how we get fans. I think that's, that's another effect of like a woman owned business too. Like, I think you probably take more time at cons to like, to, you know, talk with a particular person, like maybe one person about their, you know, the sensory experience of the tea. Like I know I appreciate that as a consumer when I go in a shop, and like someone takes the time, like Trader Joe's, when they take the time to take you to the item that you want, rather than just say, oh, it's aisle five, halfway down. Like, <laughs> so I- or, or, or even reading like in Trader Joe's, the descriptions of oh, things. Oh, yes. Like, oh, it, that totally that totally sells me in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is made, made by these people, or this makes you think of this funny thing. I'm like, oh, I see, puns. My husband is a <laughs> terrible slash great, Punster, um, and uh, if I see a pun on a on a product in a Trader Joe's or wherever, it's like okay, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> All right, love Morgan, that. how do you get your customers, fans, followers? Oh, but just echoing the last point, like that's one of the reasons I love Disney Parks so much is like they go the extra mile with customer service with all of their their cast members, and so I always strive to bring a little bit of that Disney parks magic to like the, the service that I bring to my business. But um, social media is a big one, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and just the the fandom sharing. Actually, after we released the the first Lothcat pin, Jonah Marie Masias, who uh, had the Wookiee Gunner website, and I can't remember what Geeky her name Bubble? Is, is it Geeky called. Bubble? Geeky Bubble, yes. Okay. Uh, she wrote about the pin and... It, I was just, she was my very first order. Like I almost fangirled off of that because I knew her from, from podcasts. Um, and it was just so exciting to have that level of, of support within the fandom. And then 
you know, as much as we post, it's it's just great to see other people posting on Instagram our pins and sharing them and and being proud of their collections and just being able to reshare that. So that's been a huge part of it. It's just that support. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I don't think we can do it without the fans, the businesses and us, our fan businesses too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same for me. I mean, yes, it's cool. Like, I love it when people share when they get the face masks that I make, like that's so neat. Like people are in Disney parks all the time. Morgan, did you buy one? I forget at this point. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I, didn't. I feel bad. <laughs> I don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm like, I, I didn't know those baby Yoda ones. <laughs> They're still available. <laughs> no, okay. But anyway, uh, yeah. So it's so fun when people like go to the Disney parks and post that they're wearing their baby Yoda mask or, or downtown Disney or whatever. It's, it's really cool. But one of the things, I mean, how my business got so many orders that first couple months was because of, the podcasts that I do. So the podcast listeners and followers on social media was a big one, but also the fact that um, as at Jedi Tink, I posted a lot of my progress pictures, not just the finished products, but like how I made them. I even did like an Instagram story, like sewing a mask together and stuff. And I think that kind of just posting that on an almost daily basis, put the bug in people's ear, like, Oh wait, I need a face mask. Oh, wait, I remember seeing that she was making them. And so then, then the orders just came. So I, I think that behind the scenes peak is like a good hook. I know to me it is. I like El Hopper design. She like posts in her Instagram stories all the time. And I'm like every day, she's like the one of the two Instagram stories I consistently follow. <laughs> I just think it's fun. Okay. So, okay. This is kind of a question for me because I'm bad at this. So do you guys manage different social media accounts and how do you manage this? How have you simplified this? Like, do you guys have any advice? <laughs> uh, let's Pasita. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I do a lot of posting on Facebook, which recently within the last year, I've, you know, double, I, I, I repeat the posts on um, Instagram and Twitter, but I'm not, hugely familiar or or knowledgeable of the ins and outs of uh instagram and twitter um but um so so honestly i i could use some advice too so <laughs> i could use some help but um i could tell you about what i post okay um i because i also i also do sometimes a little bit behind the scenes like okay this is us with I, I mean, I you have some of the pictures in there too this is our st our, our 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 workspace our our storage area. This is us loading into loading a van. This is us loading, uh, setting up a booth. This is what it looks like beforehand. So things like that, where where I'm looking like <laughs> my my uh, my luggage from when I'm going cross country, and like there's a picture of Dan that's shipping all the boxes <laughs> and and like kind of like <laughs> like behind the scenes that kind of stuff, and also all the things that you can do with um, different. Uh, Loading the van. Let me tell you, loading the van is like one of the worst things, <laughs> worst things ever. <laughs> uh, wow, it really is. I've 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 been in my in my in my the, our minivan before with like my legs all crunched up because I have more merchandise under my legs so <laughs> for like six hour drives. <laughs> but um, yeah, posting things like that, posting things uh that are like fandom influence, like. There was a uh, pie day, like, act, like you, not pie 3.14, pie, like. Oh, okay. Um, and, <laughs> We're such geeks. I thought it was pie, like 3.14. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we did a post for, for our Supernatural team because the character Dean really likes pie. Like, he's obsessed with pie. Um, so, like, like, things like that that make, that are related to either characters or related to um uh, nerdy things we like. Um, my, I think my post uh, last Sunday was we made some chai latte, some iced chai, chai latte, light latte with our tea. Um, I posted a picture, like, because we went outside. Um, but I also had my book with me, my Good Omens book. So um, it, we kind of like had that in a picture. It was like, oh, this is this is what a nerd lifestyle is like. Is that you're you're drinking your chai latte, iced tea while sitting outside and reading uh, Good Omens or surfing online. So 
it's it's not just products it's lifestyle so that's a little bit of what i post i just have to like get it get get that twitter and instagram figured out okay okay <laughs> yeah believe me <laughs> we all have issues morgan what about you so um i'm like the cobbler that has no shoes because I actually work in paid social media for a living. I do this every <laughs> single day. And yet I'm terrible about it for the business. Um, I have an Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I do try to individualize them a little bit because of like the nuances of the platform. But inevitably, I will post on two and forget the third. And it, it, Instagram's like always there. Like I think because it's the visual, it works pretty well for the product. But I'll forget Facebook. I'll forget Twitter. Um, I try to use Hootsuite sometimes because you can have all of your accounts, um, I think all of your accounts logged on and you can just post, like make one post and it'll post to all of them. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes I forget. I, my goal would be to have a content calendar, which is what like, this is what real professional businesses do, by the way. This is, this is like pro tips. Real businesses like, have content calendars and they know what they're going to post ahead of time when they have copy. I am in the middle of my lunch hour and go, oh, I'm going to take this photo. <laughs> I'm going to post it real quick because I haven't posted in three days. Don't okay. be like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I am like you because I'll be like, Woohoo! I'll be posting, posting, and then a week goes by, and I'm like, oh, I haven't posted on Instagram in a while. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on then, because I have no advice to give on that. Um, how do you know, or how did you know when your business was a success? And Morgan, let's go with you, since you're right there. Um, so for me, I mean, there was a couple different levels of success. One was just, um, First, the first thing that I thought was successful was when Anne came to me and said, I want you to design a pin. And that was just like mind blowing, <laughs> running around the house, kind of screaming. But once we got to a point where, you know, we were making a, a decent profit that we could not only turn back into the business to either reprint or make more pins, but then have like extra money on top of that was, was pretty cool. And of course, I'm still trying to take all of that and put it into new products, but so there's different levels of success, you know, right? There's like that personal level, and then there's that level of of like financial success where you think you're, you know, you're yeah, you're definitely. What about you, Pasita? Um, how do I know my business is a success? Eh, S's. Uh, when it's, I call it equilibrium. Um, so when I know that it's by itself healthy, so um, the the income and outcome, the money going in and out is, is self-sustaining. Um, there's room for growth. Um, and also I know how it go is going to end, or I have an idea of how it's going to end. There has to be a beginning, a middle and an end. So I, you know, I think about that all the time. It's like, how, how, how do I grow and where do I have to then pivot and change? Um, Cause we started with a, uh, long time ago with a, a, a rent fair business, like we were selling clothing. And, and um, I noticed that um, the market was changing and the culture was changing. So, so we said, well, this is, is great for a side gig. It's, it, it's great for beer money, basically. Um, but we'll never be able to make a living off of it. Or, or um, you know, there, there, there's a ceiling to what we can do with it, which is fine if that makes you happy. Um, but so we we started TM Absinthe and tra kind of transitioned out of that um, and followed some other passions. And it's funny how um, the things I was into then changed, and so my business changed. The, the like the fandoms or the the obsessions that I had changed a little bit. Like I grew, and then the business grew. So. Um, yeah, so when it when it can support itself, when it has a place to go and has a way to end, that is what I call a healthy business. Nice. Oh. So like as in terms of end, like where do you see the end of tea and absinthe? Hopefully not for a okay, long time. Okay. <laughs> but um uh I there's there's different ways. There 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 could be 
there there are multiple realities okay <laughs> so for 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 this it's like um because you know i we had to change the business because i said like about i don't know seven years ago we're going to get older and we're not going to blow the car the van anymore with all that stuff some point we're going to hit our 50s, 60s, 70s. So what what am I going to do then? How is it going to change? So I started doing more online stuff and kind of growing that. And it's really taken off like in the past year or so, a couple of years, uh, that it's 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 starting to to expand. So I'm I'm paying more attention to that right now, paying more attention to uh the online business because uh at some point, you know, we'll get older. Um also I might find new obsessions. Yeah. So, uh, me- meaning you, yeah. this is great, and maybe I could have a manager take over, and I could start something else because my obsession will will grow into to something else. Yeah. Right now, sorry. No, that about. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and That's Brand awesome. in the chat, such wisdom. I want to be Pasita when I grow up. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was cute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, yeah, and I knew that uh, face <laughs> fandom for your face. I still haven't figured out a name. I knew that would it was a success. Like, well, so basically, you have to spend money to make money, and this is something I learned. Like, I'm uh, I'm reluctant to do that, but like, you know, when April third came and I had to go to Joanne's to buy a bunch of fabric, you know, it turned out to be a hundred and eighty dollars, and I was like, oh man, am I going to get this back? You know, like it was like a lot to drop at once when you didn't know when money was coming in because all the parties had canceled. Like it was scary. And, but I did. And I I plunked it down and started making masks as fast as I could, along with help from Teresa and my mom, Norma. And so, yeah, like, and I made that money back. So I knew after a month when I started thinking about the Baby Yoda masks, like I had to invest even more to create these. And I had, and what I knew it was a su- success because when I plunked down the money to get those, like that stuff, um, what is it? Like the, the ribbon and everything. I, I had no problem doing that. I was like, oh, I know I'll make this back. Like it was like, I just felt good about it. And I felt like it, the business was working. So I think it's also a feeling when you know you're successful as well. Even n- not only numbers, but feelings, right? That's that's a woman's business for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So totally. here's a big question and probably a big question this year. When do you know when your business needs to pivot or end or it's not being, or a part of it's not being successful? And Pasita, you kind of started talking about this. So do you want to, do you oh, want to continue yeah. that? Um, I... I watched my sales. Um, if I notice that something is taking off, I say, why is it? And uh, uh, if something is starting not to sell, I say, why is it? And that helps me um, figure out where to pivot uh, and and when to t- take a new direction um, and what to emphasize. like. I know that a certain teacup is getting more, uh, more, more people buy, are buying it. They're more into it. So I put more money into teacups and I get more teacups, for instance. So things like that. Um, hmm. Mm-hmm. How, See, how? Huh. Well, you're, <laughs> you no, you were Jesus. talking about when do you pivot end. So like, let's, let's talk, let's kind of go a little forward and say like, how has, the pandemic affected your business and did you find yourself changing because oh. of that? Uh, I, I am lucky because I started building the website years ago in anticipation of some time of it, it, it taking over. So we're just doing it a little yeah. faster and a little more ah, help uh, right now. So like, um, we we lost so much of our sales from cons because that's right now that's where i make most mm. of my money that's where i make most of my living so we lost so much with all the cons to canceled and i think some cons are going to be canceled in 2021 so i don't know what's going to happen there 
But my online sales have shot up like a hundred percent. Um, and while it's still, it's still good. It's, it's not, it's not as good as working a convention, but, um, it's, it's getting us through. So I'm lucky that, that I had started the website a few years earlier, but, um, I do see a lot of, um, my vendor friends having a hard time switching over to online and how to, how to make that work that, um, it's it's a big question. Like, how do we? I, I I'm thinking about conventions coming back, and how do we? Uh, um, like, how our how our booths are going to look like? Because we'll have to have maybe like plexiglass or everything behind that nobody touches, and so that changes the experience of what I've been doing for less the past you know ten years or so. So that's a thing to 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 worry about, to think about. Um, but yeah, the pandemic started and uh, all my sales went up in one way and went down okay. in another. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Morgan? I know you're online, but um, so like when do you know to pivot or how has the pandemic affected you? Yeah, well, so we started as a jacket business and uh, I spent hours and, and dollars running around getting uh, really good quality denim jackets from flea markets all over Cleveland at the time and buying fabric and buying thread and spent hours, you know, build me, me yeah, spent hours making all these jackets oh. and none of them sold, not a single jacket sold. Um, I did like one custom for a friend and then another custom for a friend of a friend and I'm like, I don't get it. Like, What's going on? So the the long term plan had always been to start with jackets and then make patches and make pins, um, and I knew that it was either close the shop or you know pivot into one of those early. And so as I mentioned, we made the lock gap pin, and things kind of took off on the pin side. And the the jackets sold a little bit here and there, but uh, it is hard because you do have to have the right, uh. the right size, and somebody has to you know find what they're looking for, but. Ultimately, like I knew it was either it was either shut it down or or make a change early. And so <laughs> that was a pretty obvious one for me. Now it's more because the pin business is successful. It's more of, you know, does this individual design work? Like, is this popular? And, you know, do we how low do we make the price just to try to get it to move? Um, you know, or do we stash it away and have it as giveaway as for <laughs> celebration? Um, so those are the things that we think about now. Um, if we can give things away in the future, who knows? Uh, but, you know, as far as the pandemic, our pins are manufactured uh, in Guangzhou, China. So oh. when the pandemic first hit, it was actually right after Chinese New Year. Mm. Chinese New Year is always a big production break for us. And then it hit right after and I had some orders out there and, you know, people were very nice, but they were like, when are you going to get more of the Ahsoka fulcrum pin? Mm. Yeah. I, like, I don't know. <laughs> You're oh, good my gosh. Mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, the whole pandemic affected me by kind of jumpstarting <laughs> my business in that way. Yeah. So uh, that happened. And then also now I'm finding because face masks are now readily available at like supermarket checkouts and everything for very cheap, you know, I, I'm not getting near the orders, which is totally understandable. And so like now I I have a, a chance after Force Fest now, because that was a big... <laughs> <laughs> a big job getting that already, but you know, I have a chance now to invest in maybe some new, sh new things like an embroidery machine, a cricket machine, you know, and I'm going to experiment and see what I can do to expand what I'm doing and the products I'm making. Cause I really find it fun to create a product, like design something. Cause I am an artist and I love, I love to do that. And it's just really fun to be in charge of that and in charge of your design and like, this is what I'm doing and have people respond to that. It's, it's really exciting. And that's what drives me as well. Yeah. There was a, a comment yeah. in the discussion earlier, way earlier that said with a uh, face mask for fandom, you could, you could segue into cosmetics. <laughs> face masks. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. This, this is a thought. I saw I saw that comment Whoa, earlier. That's a good idea. Oh, speaking of the chat, though, we do have to call out John Zoncanaro. Thank you for your donation of V Coin, woohoo! And also Jeff Rooks, Je Morgan. Do you know Jeff? 
That's my tech support. <laughs> Aww. Well, thank you, Jeff Brooks. Very exciting. Thank you guys for your donations. And speaking of also, so far on the Make-A-Wish page online that you can go to, this is this is above and beyond the Vcoin donation. We've raised so far $358 for Make-A-Wish Greater LA. So yay. Oh. And we don't know how much yet yeah. um, between the two, okay. like, you know, how much the total amount is right now. But that's pretty awesome. And I also want to say, if you guys are just coming in, right now is technically the end time of our show, but because the the panel after us had to cancel, we can go a little bit longer. So we might go an extra 15 minutes or so. Um, get through our questions here, right? All right. Okay. So how do you guys deal with competition? Let's see. How about you, Pasita? Um... I, uh, in my notes, I wrote that this is another way that maybe a woman run this business is different. Um, I don't want to uh, beat my competition. I want to beat my own uh, goals. So like, it's not necessarily for me to, to, to beat another vendor, uh, but to be in my, uh, different from them. So to to have different product, different lineup, a, basically a different take on fandom, a different take on um, my teas, a different take on my products. Um, so don't try to be in competition necessarily with people, but be your own thing. Because um, there's there's room enough for more voices. Um, there's room enough for for more people than just me. It doesn't have to be just me. Um, I've bought tea from other vendors. Other vendors have bought tea from me because everything is different and everything tastes so good that like, and, 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 and yeah. So don't, don't try to beat competition. Try to be your own unique self. That makes self. sense. Yeah. What about you, Morgan? I love that advice so much. And I would like to tell everyone to listen to Pasita's advice because <laughs> I, I have not dealt well with competition through uh, the course of LBL. And one of the things that I've struggled with a lot is um, imposter syndrome, which is kind of this thing that no matter how successful you are or how you know good your stuff is, you always feel like you don't belong. So anytime I would see competition, I'd freak out. Like somebody else did a love cat pin and I'd freak out. Um, everyone's doing everything better than me. Everybody's designs are better than mine. Everybody has more sales than mine. and. Uh, to the point where it actually, I almost shut the business down and it was just, I'm going to sell out these last pins and we're going to close because I just couldn't handle it. And uh, it was actually going to celebration in Chicago that really kind of got me back into it and got me to a place where um, I felt like we were doing okay. Also therapy. I'm just going to be real honest. Therapy can help a lot. <laughs> um, I have anxiety, so it played into it, but um, but yeah, Pasita's right. Like there's a lot of Star Wars pin makers out there and uh, they're all doing amazing things and there's room for everybody. Just everybody's doing something different. And they're all everybody's doing different things. Different. Yeah. It's like everybody's style is different. Even if you're all doing <laughs> mob cats, like they don't look the same. No, they don't. Um, they don't. So, you know, embrace it and get to know the the community because great things happen when you get to know people you can, I mean, I don't know how, how the, how tea in it, but with in the pin market, we trade a lot. Like oh, I like that pin. Oh, I like that pin. Let's trade. Um, so that's really fun. And then you'll get involved in like group giveaways and all sorts of things. So it's really challenging, but try not to let the competition stray from who you are as a business yeah. and like what wow. your style is. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. And I think like for me, you know, face masks, you know, the cheap ones are readily available. So it's like, how do I differentiate myself? And that's just using my creativity to do that. So creating special masks for like, you know, park goers, things like that, like the baby Yoda ones. So that's, that's how I kind of dealt with competition and also lowering the prices on the original masks as well. So yeah, that's. And Sarah, we <gasps> a really cool Captain Marvel face mask. All right. Oh. How about that? That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. See, that's why I need an embroidery machine so I can just create my own. Uh, what are they called? What are these? I forget. Patches. Thank you. 
<laughs> I have to write that down. Woo. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So let's, let's go to like, so you, you talked about imposter syndrome, Morgan. So let's like dive right into like, maybe what's our biggest mistake. Um, uh, or I guess that would be yours, right, Morgan? Um, nah. I mean, yeah, I, I do feel like my mis biggest mistake was have like letting it get to me so much to the point where I feel like my business could be bigger now oh. had I not had that lag where I was like, I'm done. This is too hard um, because I like I wasn't producing anything new. I just kind of let everything go quiet. And again, not that like trying to compare to people, but like I look at other businesses that started at the same time that kept going strong and like where they are. And I'm like, but that was on me. Like that was my decision. And that was something that I had to go through and had to, to deal with myself and ultimately come out on the other side of it better and stronger. And, you know, well, I'll, I'll get to where, you know, I want the business to be, but um, you have to grow from those mistakes, right? Like there's going to be competition. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be someone who copies you. Like I've, I've had an instance where someone almost exactly copied a design I made and you just have to keep going and move on from it. Uh, and learn from yeah. those challenges. Okay. And those what about you, Pasita? Uh, my biggest mistake is a mistake that I'm making now. Um, having to delegate work and 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 it's been past time since I should have hired somebody to help me. Um, aside from you know, I have my booth uh, uh, booth, booth booth minions, um, but like. I, I need more help. I, I just, I, I need more help. I need to, I need someone to manage some like ordering for me so I can work on other projects. So delegating is, is my, my biggest. I, I think like trusting someone yeah. with delegation too is also hard because you are, have such control and yeah. you know how you work. Yeah. It's trusting someone to do a, you know, what you need them to do uh, in the time you need them to do it. <laughs> like, and also, and also to have yeah. the same vision, to to have the same same i i um, a vision as you and, and outlook, so that you know that uh, that it's it's going to be fine. That that the decisions that they make are going to be in line yeah. with what the business gotcha. is. Yeah, for me, my biggest mistake is like possibly happening right now. I'm kind of at a crossroads because there's no really face mask orders, but. I think my biggest mistake would be not to move forward with this business right now. That's kind of, you know, it's launched because of the pandemic, but now it's time for me to, you know, take the, grab those wings and, and fly. <laughs> and yeah. And so yes, that's, yes. you know, it's, it's time for me to pivot. And so that's my crossroads right now. So I'll be, I'll be doing that and investing in some supplies and, and yeah, growing, growing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's go to, cause I know as women, we have work, we have life. How do we balance this? We're getting down to the last couple of questions here. So how do you balance work and life? Morgan. I try to set aside certain like nights of the week that I fulfill orders before it was willy nilly. Like I get an order and I'd fulfill it and that didn't work. So now I've got like certain nights, like my husband and I sit down and we're like assembly style. We, we, you know, pack up all the orders, take them to the post office the next morning. Um, and then for, you know, for us weekends tend to be the time we're both on the laptop because he designs and I design and we're both designing things. So that's, that's how we kind of designate certain time for the business, but we also like make sure that we have time to, you know, do other things and, you know, just have downtime because we also both work full-time jobs. So um, just really compartmentalizing things and making sure that there's, you know, the full-time job hours and then like the LBL hours, which, you know, we still consider them to be like fun because it's our own, you know, it's, it's not something that, you know, we have to do. It's something we like to do, but Makes again, sense. just making time. What about you, Casita? Uh, well, first of all, I want to say, I imagine you and your husband sitting and designing together the same way I met, I imagine you, me and my partner sitting talking about tea. Like there has to be lots of arguments or yelling or, oh my God, wouldn't this be cool with your partner? <laughs> like 
no, no, it has to be this way, or, or no, it has to taste this li- like this for this character, or you know, that's the kind of thing. I, I think that's, I think we're we're pretty much the same there. <laughs> it's, it's also a lot of sitting in silence, like both on our laptops, and then like somebody will turn around, and be like, okay, what do you think? And you'll be like, okay, change that, change okay, the line. But otherwise, it's really good. And then... Yeah, I do the same thing. So like, I I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Um, how do I, I actually, I'm really bad at balancing my work in life. Uh, the pandemic has been <laughs> great for me in that respect. <laughs> uh, no, because, um, I really was going like, when, when's the next show? Got to load a van, got to, got to do these orders, got to pack this tea, got to do this. Like the pandemic kind of helped me to like say, oh, I can get up today and I don't have to start work until one in the afternoon because I'm home and I can relax for a second. It's getting busier now, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's really hard to balance it. Also because I'm always thinking about stuff. Like I go to bed at night and I just lie in bed for like an hour going, okay, I got to do this. I got to call this person. I, we got to, you know, try this new packaging or, or whatever it is. So it's like, it never stops. It's hard to turn your brain off. Yeah. So I'm still learning how to, how to, how to balance that work life lit, lit thing. But uh, the pandemic <laughs> <That's helped. funny. laughs> I think the balance comes, but the brain doesn't turn off. I woke up this morning with a new idea and I was like, oh, and actually my husband doesn't even know about this idea yet, but I was like, yeah, we're, and I pulled up my phone and I started looking at <laughs> stuff and I'm like, yeah, we're that's exciting. This. So. Yeah, I know for me, balance, like, because Richard and I own the the party company, so we had to work on that. But then I also really like doing this, you know, my business too. And so it's just balancing those and just making sure that I have time for each of them. And Richard is really, really good about, you know, making sure that I have time to do what I want to do. And I really appreciate that from him. And so finally kind of balance that by after dinner we we have we have like our dinner time and then after dinner we we both have some energy left so like we'll each go to our our separate caves and like work and that's like the best time probably from nine to midnight when we both don't get interruptions from like calls or anything and we can really concentrate on our two separate things he's usually planning a podcast episode and i'll be sewing or (laughs) <laughs> doing some some art so so yeah it, it works well all right you guys so uh let's see if anyone's left and has any questions we can probably take maybe one or two and then we'll have to say goodbye so does anyone have any questions for us in business who wants to start a business i want to know <laughs> Yeah, you guys have had such good advice. I really, this is this has been great so far. I hope. I. That's so awesome, and you know, if if there's people that don't like have questions now, but are interested in starting businesses, like my inbox is always open. Especially, you know, with you know myself being on Etsy, and Etsy has its own nuances. If anybody needs questions, like help needs help with that, that's awesome. Like, well, speaking that of help. that, if we don't get any questions, mm-hmm. why don't we share our social media? Uh, so Morgan, why don't you tell where people can find you and hit you up? Sure. So on on Twitter, um, we're at Luminous Beings L. Uh, on Instagram, we are at Luminous Beings Ltd. Uh, and then on Facebook is also Luminous Beings Ltd. Uh, and then my personal Instagram is uh, at the Girl in the Galaxy. And, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> and on maybe it. a picture with Ashley Eckstein, right? <laughs> And there is a, yeah, my really bad Jedi pose next to Ashley who's so perfect. That's so funny. Okay. All right. Pasita, what about you? Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, all at uh, T and Absinthe. Um, here, it's spelled like this. <laughs> Show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell. Um, yeah, awesome. uh, you can find me. And there. you can find me right now if you go to skywalkingthroughneverland.com and click on face masks, you'll find that business. Uh, I'm also at Jedi Tink on social media everywhere. And 
thank you guys, everyone. We are doing this, of course, for Make-A-Wish Greater LA. So your donation will directly fund seriously ill children with their wishes. And so, yeah, if you want any last minute donations here, you can click on the link that Bryn just put in the chat, or you can use the V-Coin on any panel, on any stage of Force Fest, and that will be counted toward a wish for a child. And that's that's so, so important. Yay. All right, you guys. Yay. So the next panel on this stage is All Up with J.W. Rinsler. And it happens to be a panel that I'm co-hosting with my husband, Richard. So <laughs> it's featuring the author, <laughs> Star Wars author, J.W. Rinsler. We'll be talking about his career, his making of Star Wars books. And he has a new book out called All Up. It's about the space race. It's kind of a if this happens space race kind of book. And he's also doing a book about Howard Kaz Kazanjian, who is one of the producers on Star Wars, I believe. So yeah, uh, we'll be talking to him in a little bit at 3.15 p.m. Pacific. All right, well, thank you ladies so, so much. I, I just had a really awesome time chatting with you. Thank you for coming on today. And then I, oh good. I think we should outro by awesome. saying, may the force best be with you. You guys ready? Okay, so after we say this, Bryn, you can close yeah. out the broadcast. One, two, three. May the Force Fest be with you. May the Force, Force Fest, Fest be with you. With you. <laughs>